So something that you may not know is that I actually have a, another company. Uh, so I have Synactive, I have my like YouTube channel and all that. And then we've got another one that we have actually not really talked about on this vlog much, and it's called Micro Rotor Entertainment, which is a pretty silly name, but like we can't come up with something better. So if you have a better idea than that for what we're, we're about to talk about, please let me know because we just were running out of luck. But anyway, me, uh, Gab707 and Jesse Perkins from Tiny Whoop, uh, basically created this little company that is like, uh, the whole goal of it is to be uh, an activation for events. So whether that event is like a corporate mixer or a conference or a party or something like that, it turns out that having a drone race at your event is kind of cool and people really like it. And I, I'm all about it. They, you know, whatever people want at their event, it's, it's more power to them. But uh, so we actually built a whole kit that is like a ready to go drone race in a box. And that's what I'm gonna show to you today. Because tomorrow I'm heading down to Austin, Texas for the championship of the Air Series. That's DRL's um, robotic racing circuit where like the winning team gets a, a million bucks and they get a chance to race their AI against the uh, a, a human drone racer, which is going to be Gab 707. So in the meantime, at part of that party is that Lockheed Martin and DRL want some tiny whoops for people to try, fly, see, um, experience, and, and just kind of know what FPV is like from like a human racing perspective to contrast against the, the robotic racing. So I'm going to show you our kit before we pack it up and ship it out for tomorrow's event. Of course you can't see in here, but that's, that's, that's the box. Oh, actually here. Perfect. So I'm trying to, I've got this light here and I want to put it so you can see what's going on in the box. Part number one in the tiny whip box, gaff tape. You can never run out of it. You always need it. Gaff tape is super useful. Like for right now, where I'm going to take this light, stick it to the lid of the box so that we can see what we're doing. Hopefully. Boom. Look at that. Okay. So like I said, first we got gaff tape that's in there. I've got my DX8. I'm going to put it in here later. I've got like a soft shell case for it that I'll keep in here. Um, we got a puppy. Hey, Kylo. What are you doing? You got your toy? Yeah, you got your toy. Then in these boxes, so one of the things that we don't really want to do is put everybody into goggles. Now, goggles are great. It's a great way to experience FPV, but it's not always the best way to get attention. Um, and so we've built these kits that are an HDMI receiver in a box. So on here, literally just taped together, this is a, a video receiver with an antenna. And then we've got a power plug for the video receiver. And we've got USB power for this um, HDMI or a, the AV to HDMI converter. So literally we just plug this one thing in, plug this into the, to a, the TV. Like usually TVs these days have USB ports. If they don't, we've got wall warts for them. Um, and then we have an HDMI cable that will run out of the top of this box into the TV. And so now we have the ability to have reception for a tiny whoop or a bunch of tiny whoops on a bunch of different TVs. So I've got like two or three, I've got three of these full RX kits here in the box ready to go. Next up, we've got a little storage divider. There's nothing in this one. Um, and this guy, we've got extra cords. We've got wall warts uh, and we also have our chargers. So we've got a bunch of these tiny whoop battery chargers like this one. Um, so we can charge six at a once HB, all that good stuff. There's, one, two, three, four, four of them in here. So we can charge up to six, 12, 24 batteries at the same time uh, so that we can always have birds in the air. Next kit is more uh, receiver kits, um, all sorts of backup gear. There's wall warts for USB. There's more receivers, backups. Uh, you can never have enough when you're at an event and you need to be able to deliver. Like you just bring more stuff than you need. Um, and then we've got a couple sets of ride along goggles. Uh, these are some pretty cheapo little uh, Marvel Vision. I think it's a FX, FX product. Um, and so we have the ability for people to ride on. I've got a pack of, there's a bunch of antennas in here for these like this. Um, 
and then these little screens here uh, power off of USB. So I bring a multi-port USB um, plug that just that actually travels with my normal gear. Um, it's not in the box right now. I'm gonna probably buy a separate one for this box. Uh, that basically you can just run the goggles forever. So you have the ability to look through, look at them on the screen or look at the through the goggles and, and people like to have both, right? Usually I use the TV to like attract people to come to our space and then I put the goggles on them so they get to kind of experience it firsthand. So put all this aside. And then the grand finale is our aircraft. So we have a whole fleet of Tiny Whoop Racer one, or like the original, the, the ones that Jesse is known for, um, that are currently branded for the Alpha Pilot program, which is Lockheed Martin's, that's their name for the, the program, is Alpha Pilot. You can also see like right on the side there, Lockheed Martin. And so we basically print these uh, stickers out of um, Grail, uh, like the touch, like for people that don't, that that are blind, they use Grail to see. Like the, this is textured, and that's how you get that really really fine detail print in there. Is with that, so we use that to to get a whole fleet of these drones, um, all branded for clients. So, you know, we got a whole bunch of aircraft in here, but you can see there's plenty of them, and they're just all nicely stacked up in their little box all ready to go when we need them to fly. So the reason that we went with the Tiny Whoop Racer, other than of course Jesse being a partner of our company, is that they are really quick and easy to bind. So like if I'm just running it on DSMX on Spectrum, I can just plug that one in, wait for it to go into bind mode, hold my bind button down, turn on the radio, and before you know it, I've already got this tiny whoop bound up. You gotta hold this over here so that it doesn't error out. And then we all have the same channel mapping on our radios and we're ready to fly. They're such cute little guys. Yeah, so having a whole fleet of tiny whoops all pre, like none of them are bound uh, up to the thing already. They're just ready to, to be set up. Um, on the go is super crucial because when you're doing an event like this, you need to be able to go quickly and make sure that everything is ready um, at any given time. Uh, so we chose the simplest possible solution for that and we're really, really happy with it. It's actually been pretty flawless in terms of setting up these events. So anyway, I gotta finish packing this up, um, get all my kit ready to go, ready to rock for the morning. Um, we're flying out of here. I'm gonna get some stickers on my Pelican. Uh, so that I don't lose it at the airport. And uh, we'll see you in the morning on the way to Austin, Texas.
that is definitely enough travel for the day. Uh, it was like a three and a half hour layover, which was my own doing. I wanted to fly on Delta, but uh, yeah, so we're here. We made it to Austin, Texas. Our event's tomorrow, so I'm getting everything charged right now. Um, yeah, apparently I forgot the mic for my camera, so this is the internal mic, so I hope it isn't terrible. It's probably fine right now, but like once I get to the event tomorrow, I'm not going to be able to talk to camera at all, so that kind of sucks, but it'll be what it is. Um, and uh, yeah, so I want to get up early in the morning and get a run in. Um, we're right on the river uh, here in Austin, so I should be able to go out and get some nice views and, and run before everything starts. Try to get back into that. It's not... It's not always going the best, but uh, you know what? I gotta start somewhere, so let's uh, make it a good one. Uh, Alright, 7 a.m. Let's uh, go get a run in. start it's uh 3.18 miles or 5k felt good great views saw the sunrise uh, let's get cleaned out get some breakfast and get to the venue let's go in the past the uh, artificial intelligent drones did not do great on the launch so like there's even a mat here like a squishy mat for them to fall on because they often crash right off the start podium so that's actually kind of funny uh, but then they launch they go through gate one two three four and then into the finish gate which is over there we're all set up over here we've got our tiny whips a whole bunch more in here Ready to rock. Batteries are all charging up. Backup stuff. Let's set this back in there. USB charging. DX8. Whole bunch of stuff. What? What'd you say? <laughs> That's right. You walk away. You wanna fly one? Alright. And then we've got our flame gates set up are looking absolutely beautiful and we got a sim station which Brandon here is going ham you ever, you ever fly one of these before we'll fix that in post Korbyshevsky, CEO of DRL. They're messing with me. I just did a, you know, a run as if I was going into the finish gate, and they timed it, and they're like going on about, um, I don't know if I'm faster or slower than what's been recorded so far. Um, and everyone's messing with me. Why is there so much pressure? Well, there's a lot of pressure because if the AI wins, they win a quarter million bucks. Um, if I win, I don't win anything, but that's beside the point. Uh, I the but uh, yeah, I cannot lose this apparently. <laughs> I would, but we're, we have to 
close the course to set up. That's the hard part. Like we were running against nothing. He loses. It's it's not, it's not. <laughs> so, so there's a quarter million. Let me get this. Straight. There's a quarter million bucks on the line, and you gave me two batteries that can do two 10-second runs each. Are you shaking? So I have four runs. Are you four runs in on this on this 10-second track. So you're shaking in your boots, is what you're saying. I don't know. I don't know if I'm shaking. You've had more runs. I, th I think they're shaking more than I'm shaking. You've had more runs than the team, actually. <laughs> yeah, we're happy with your practice. Right? They. Whoever wins wouldn't have had more. Yeah, how many than, runs you need? Would have had more than four runs. They would have had max three. Look, I haven't raced this machine ever. All I've done was just putz this thing around every time. Think of it this way: the machine, the the machine, machine, you were the machine has never raced you either. To be fair, I'm not nervous. It's not me. <laughs> Nurk, Nurk's got your back with the footage of Thunder. Yeah, I don't. I'm not comfortable with Nurk being like the mediator here. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a uh, safe. Bet. I'm not mediating. I'm just watching you guys. That, could be, that video could be worth a quarter mil. <laughs> you don't even know it. I still say, go to the team and say, for $50,000, I'll hit the first gate. Yeah, that's, that, I was, I was about to tell him. I'm glad you got that on video. Yeah, because if yeah, that right. shakes out. Are person safe? Yep. The one you just like? Uh, bigger, two carry a GoPro. Say it again? There's no way I was gonna beat that. There's no way. I'm calling it right now. There's no way. Gab's too good of a pilot. There's no way. So that's Gab 707 practicing for his actual. So he's got a race against the AI later. So he's getting practice laps in with the Racer AI, which is something not something that he normally flies. Like he's got maybe 10 batteries on it, so he's trying to make sure that he's not the reason that the humans lose to the artificial intelligence. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Wait, so push wait, forward, wait. right thumb which forward, thumb forward. Don't hit Mike. Which, which one makes me feel the upper? All right, all right. Yeah. 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 will need about five minutes to reset the Racer AI drones on the podiums after each year. Waiting for our first drone off the blocks in just a moment. What? Suspenseful music. So 
Nasty. Need to get off that block. They need to get all the way through this course and finish with a half of the feet, the 12 second mark. Madlab is the winner! So that wasn't so bad. That wasn't too bad. That was you crushed those crushing, guys. Dude, crushing. Mav, Mavlab has no idea how to fly a drone. <laughs> no, we don't. We don't. We really don't. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Maybe they do. <laughs> Congratulations. Actually, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. Actually, they made way more money. You can come back on next season. Oh, man. <laughs>